In this video, I have two objectives. The first is to explain that consumption and production externalities have very important similarities. The most important similarity is that they both lead to overproduction or overconsumption. My second objective is to show you how to calculate the deadweight loss that results from this overproduction. So in terms of the similarities, it's important to understand that consumption and production externalities are, in a sense, a situation in which uh, the private individuals or the private firms are shifting costs or burdens onto third parties. Now, as a consequence of the fact that they're shifting costs or burdens onto third parties, this tends to lead to overproduction when we have a, a competitive market. In other words, what we mean by overproduction is that the market equilibrium output, which we denote as Q sub M, exceeds the socially optimal level of production, which we'll denote by Q star. Overproduction, in turn, because it's in, in an efficiency, reduces uh, social welfare. At, and we know this because if you look at, at calculate the marginal social cost, which is uh, denoted by MSC sub M, it exceeds the marginal social benefit. That means that the resources that go, are going into the production of that product, uh, the value of those resources exceeds the benefit that is created by producing that unit of the, of the good with, the, with those resources. We measure the, the loss to society using the concept of deadweight loss. It's a money measure of the inefficiency. Now, uh, let's turn to the deadweight loss and, and how we calculate it. Here is a, a formula for calculating deadweight loss, and I'm sure when you look at it, it looks a, a bit daunting or, or complicated, but when you think about each of the parts, it actually makes intuitive sense. So let's look at this first term in parentheses over here. This first term is really the difference between the market equilibrium output, Q sub M, and what is the socially optimal amount of production. This is, the difference is positive because we have over production. And you, as you can see, uh, the deadweight loss will increase the larger the extent of overproduction. And so that makes sense. Now this term over here looks a little bit uh, complicated, but um, when we if you multiply it by one half, the, over here, take the term one half, and you multiply this expression here, you actually get what is called the uh, sort of an average, uh, the social loss per unit of overproduction. Now let me show you graphically why, uh, why it is kind of the average that, that uh, the standard of living declines as a consequence of each unit of overproduction. So think, let me, let's see if I can draw a diagram here. We know, recall, if you recall, the deadweight loss triangle is, a, is represented by a triangle in these graphs. Now, uh, the area of that triangle is, of course, the, the loss to society. Now, um, the, the, this, this exp part of the expression here is represented by the height. Okay? This that I've circled, the, the, the loss to society as a result of uh, producing Q sub M, is represented by this height. Now notice, I can measure the air, oh, and the distance from here to here is actually the extent of overproduction. Now I can measure this area of the triangle. Think about uh, if I took a number such as here with halfway across, I go like this, dot, okay? And you can see that um, what I, that, that this area is, effectively the same as the area of the triangle. And what does this, this uh, rectangular area represent? Well, the distance across is the extent of overproduction, and half of the distance up represents the uh, social loss per unit, all right? 
Now, this will be clear, a little bit clearer later on, but the, the, the sort of very briefly why the formula looks like that. So, okay, so let's, let's look at two examples and let's apply, let's see if we can calculate dead weight loss. Okay, in this diagram, what I have is a, a situation of a negative pro production externality. I'm not going to go into the curves in, in terms of explaining the location of those. You should, you, uh, you should on your own, uh, confirm that this is indeed a situation of negative production ex externality. Um, know why it is that the actual supply curve that's in the market is below the marginal, marginal social cost curve. That is homework on your own. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a series of steps on how to A, figure out where the dead weight loss triangle is on this diagram, and then secondly, how to actually calculate the extent, the, the amount of, uh, of inefficiency. So let's start out with step one. Now, if you, if you look at step one, in step one, what it says, let's calculate the market equilibrium output. So how would we do that? Well, recall that the market equilibrium output is always going to be determined by where the supply and demand curve intersect. So this is independent of whether we have a negative uh, or positive production and consumption externalities. What, what private actors want to do in the market, the, what the private firms want to do and what the consumers want to do is uh, summarized in the demand curve and then the supply curves. So to determine the market equilibrium output, we simply go to this graph and look to see where is the supply curve. Here, the blue line, this curve that's designated as S is the supply curve, uh, the, the market supply curve, marginal private cost. Where's the demand curve? Well, here down here, this curve labeled D is the mark, marginal private benefit curve. So that is the demand curve. So notice that they both intersect uh, right here at this point right here. And I'm going to go ahead and you should do this as well. I'm going to circle that. That's an important point, okay? And be sure you circle that. If you go straight down, of course, the output where these two, where these two curves intersect, that is the market equilibrium output. And, uh, and so it's six units. So if we go straight down, we find this. This is then, then this represents Q sub M the market equilibrium output. So we, we've now found one, one piece of information that we need uh, for step one, and that is, so Q sub M, what the market is producing is six units in this diagram. Now let's look, look to, to find the socially optimal level of production, that is the efficient level of production. Now, um, the rule for that is that, recall, is that we have to have that's where the marginal social cost, that is the, um, the actual cost of producing this product, is equated with the marginal social benefit curve, and that's the D curve. So the MSC and the D curve, if you look, intersect over here, and uh, I'll bubble it, I'll put a dot here, then that represents where M, MSC sub M, which is the marginal social cost, is uh, equated to the marginal social benefit. Right? Now let's go straight down again, like we did in the, in, in when we were trying to determine the market equilibrium output, and let's draw a circle here. This is four units. This is Q star. Okay? So we found what, what the what the market equilibrium output is, which is six units. We've also found what the market would produce, the socially efficient level of production, that is four units. So uh, we now have two bits of information. Uh, we have six and four. So you can see that, uh, uh, again, it's getting ahead, of, uh, I'm getting ahead a little bit here, but you can see that, that we are, that in this situation, there's we are producing, we are overproducing. The market is leading to an overproduction of two units. Okay, now, next step. Let's figure out what this 
term is, the, the marginal social cost of the market equilibrium output. Okay, so we're trying to figure out what it's costing to produce that sixth unit. What is the, the resources that are going into that? And to determine that, we're going to have to go back to the graph. Okay, so let's go back to the graph. And for six units, what is the marginal social cost of producing that six unit? Well, we have to move, we have to go start up at six units. You go up, 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 up. And then we end up here at the marginal social cost of the six unit. Now I'm going to circle that again. That's another important point. Okay. So what we see is that the marginal social cost of producing that sixth unit, if you go uh, across to the uh, vertical axis, is $16. The marginal social cost of producing that sixth unit is $16. So let's put that information in here. $16. All right. The next step then is let's find out what the marginal social benefit or the benefits received to society as a result of producing that sixth unit. Well, we do the same, we go through the same process. We start out with the market equilibrium output. We move up on the diagram to see where it intersects the marginal uh, social benefit curve. And that occurs, so recall, this is the, this, that, the, the demand curve is also the marginal social benefit curve. And so we have right here um, marginal social benefit of, and it looks like it's $10 if we go uh, horizontally across. So that is $10, right? So we found all the information necessary to do the dead weight loss calculation. So let's turn to the formula down here. Let me move out of the way. And so the first quantity uh, in the formula is the extent of overproduction. And what we saw is that that is 6 minus 4 or 2. Okay. Now, how about this? the second quantity? Well, the second quantity is the difference between the marginal social benefit and the marginal social, uh, social cost of the market equilibrium output. And that turns out to be $16 minus $10, $6. Okay, so now we can compute the uh, dead weight loss in this, in, this, uh, in this market, and it works out to be 1 half times 2, which is 1, times uh, $6. So the total is $6. So the dead weight loss as a consequence of this negative production externality is $6. Now notice, in following these steps that I've outlined here, four steps, and putting in the dots on the uh, diagram, you've also uh, outlined or identified the corners of the dead weight loss triangle. And that is, the dead weight loss triangle is actually this, this is right here. That's the dead weight loss triangle. And this $6 that we've calculated by applying that formula, that is the area of this of this triangle, and I'm, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and shade it in, right? So remember, follow these easy steps. These these easy steps. You'll be able, and if you do so, you'll be able to ca ca calculate the loss to society of this overproduction, and you'll also be able to identify the dead weight loss triangle. Now. For you at home, you go ahead and calculate the, uh, the area of this dead weight loss triangle. And remember, it, it is comprised of, remember in calculating the area of triangles, go ahead and calculate both the, the uh, height and the width. So in, in the, pre the previous slide, I used an example of a negative production externality. Now I'm going to go through the same steps in uh, with respect to a negative consumption externality and I'll use the same steps and you'll see that I'll be able to calculate easily calculate the dead weight loss amount in dollar terms in, of, as a result of this negative consumption externality and in in following these steps and by putting the little points on the on the on the graph you will be able to identify the location of the uh, dead weight loss triangle 
And uh, once we've completed the, once I've completed this thing, um, this analysis, you should go back on your own and uh, check check uh, my results. You know, you'll I'll have a calculation of the dead weight loss, and you should calculate the area of the triangle to confirm that it matches up. Okay, so let's start. So remember, our our first step then is always to go ahead and calculate the market equilibrium output, the output that results when private firms or private individuals uh, don't take into account the costs that they impose or burdens that they are imposing on others. Okay, so how do we find the market equilibrium output? Remember that that's what the market does, and so we have to use the supply and demand curve to determine what the market equilibrium output is. So um, that's going to be where the, this um, supply curve intersects with the demand curve. And they do so right here. Here's the intersection of the supply curve with the demand curve. Now, if we go, and now remember, go ahead and draw a point. I'm gonna go ahead and draw the point as I indicated to you that what you should do. So I've drawn the circle. I've drawn the point, and then I'll go straight down, and that will tell me what the uh, market equilibrium output is. And so if I go straight down, I see then I have an output of six units, and that is Q sub M. That is the market equilibrium output. Okay, so let's go ahead and write that in. We found six Let's find out now the socially optimal amount, the amount that the market would produce if there were no uh, negative consumption externalities. All right, and, and that is going to occur where the marginal social benefit curve intersects with the marginal social cost curve. And let's look for these. If uh, I'm gonna step back here, uh, you can see that this is the marginal uh, social cost curve, the blue line, the marginal social cost curve, and let's see where it intersects with the marginal social benefit curve. And uh, uh, moving here, we see right here, here's where the two intersects. That's where the marginal social cost intersects with the marginal social benefit curve. And that is what helps us to determine what is the efficient level of, of, of output or production. And so if we go straight down, uh, oh, I forgot to put my, circle my little point here, and then going straight down, and I have an, uh, the socially optimal level of production is four units. So that is Q star, right? Okay, let's uh, also write it over here. So we see that the extent of overproduction as a result of a, a negative consumption externality or extent of overconsumption is two units, it's six minus four. And I'm, I think I'm gonna go ahead and, and put that down here as well so that, uh, so that you know that the extent of overproduction. All right, now let's find out the other bits of information that we need. We need to go ahead and find now the, for the market equilibrium output, we need to find out what the marginal social cost of that is, of producing that, that, uh, this, that sixth unit. And to do that, we need to start, we'll start from uh, down with the margin where uh, output is equal to six, move up, vertically up, and go to where it intersects with the marginal social cost. And if you see, it intersects, uh, six units intersects the curve right here with the marginal social cost is equal to, if you look, it is equal to $10, okay? If you move in that direction, you can find out the ten, the marginal social cost of producing the mar market equilibrium output is ten dollars. All right, let's find out what the marginal social benefit is of producing of of that sixth unit or the market equilibrium output. Again, just start down at six, go up to where it intersects the marginal social benefit curve, and then of course you move in this direction across, and you'll see that it's it it's $4, so the marginal social benefit is $4. All right, so we'll, I'll put that here, $4. Now, I'll take this information, right? You can see the, the, the amount of, uh, of, um, of social loss as a consequence of this, this overconsumption or overproduction, and 
the per unit amount of the market equilibrium associated with the market equilibrium output is $10 minus four or $6, okay? All right, so let's do the calculation. One half times two times six gives us, it's equal to $6. The dead weight loss associated with the dead weight loss associated with a um, the neg this negative consumption externality is six dollars. Now, notice I forgot to do one one thing in step four. In step four, if you recall, it was four dollars. Uh, the marginal social benefit of the market equilibrium output was four dollars, and and I, I found that by going starting from the market equilibrium output of six and moving up to see where it intersected with the marginal social benefit curve. I forgot to put the dot, okay? So let's put that dot. There we go. So there you see the, in the diagram, if you look at the, 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 the we find that those dots represent the, th the three corners of the dead weight loss triangle. So you on your own confirm Try, calculate the area of this triangle on your own. Confirm that it is, it is indeed equal to $6. Remember how you calculate the area of a triangle. It is, in this case, it's the width, with the, which is the extent of overproduction, and then the height, all right, or the, the length of the base. So count, make sure that that is equal to $6. All 